Semiconductors are a huge part of our life, but why should you care? Well, there's currently a worldwide shortage and they're in everything in your house right now that has an electronic chip in it. They are also in every single part of your car. Without these chips, we can't have any of the modern devices we're all used to and we can't have electric vehicles or even combustion vehicles. So today we're gonna to be looking about why there is a worldwide shortage on these chips and what is being done to sort it. Now before we get into the effect that this is gonna have on the electric car market, because that's what my channel is about, it's about EVs, well, let's have a look at what semiconductors actually are. Semiconductors are made from a few materials but mainly silicon. It's cut into wafers and then made into chips. Now these chips are a way of shrinking electrical components from being huge to being very small. This makes it cheaper but it also means instead of computers being the size of your house they can now fit into the palm of your hand and they're in absolutely everything they're in your sat nav they're in your usb chargers they're part of the control units of combustion cars and also electric cars they are literally controlling everything now we got that out of the way let's talk about why there is a shortage why it's having an effect on car supply how long it's likely to last for and more importantly what is causing it well Let's go to the cause, and basically anything that's ever gone wrong this year has been blamed on COVID. Uh, pretty much anything from uh, why your stuff hasn't arrived from China, if you're in the UK, the uh, argument at the moment has been uh, COVID. Um, why there is a shortage on tyres? Well, all the factories were weirdly in Wuhan, so... Um, COVID and um, silicon chips, uh, you know, this semiconductor shortage has been blamed on COVID. Now, of course, that is one of the reasons, but it's only one of many complex reasons what has been causing the huge shortage. So, of course, when the pandemic first hit, factories were shut down, and this is the same for all factories all over the world. But you could argue that if the factory was shut down, the people that were consuming these electronics and bits and bobs were also shut down because of the pandemic. So therefore, it shouldn't have had a huge effect on supply chains because pretty much everyone was shut down roughly at the same time during the start of uh, COVID. Uh, I'm, trying, I'm gonna try and not say COVID again for the rest of this video because I absolutely hate discussing it. And I think everyone is in the same box as me. But anyway, the, all these factories were shut for exactly the same reason, but that is just one of the reasons at play. The other reason is we were basically uh, all very bored during lockdown, uh, extremely bored. So there was a huge increase in people buying more tech from PlayStations to Xboxes to new phones to 52-inch TVs that people decided to buy because they weren't going out to cinemas, so they decided to make their own cinema rooms to hi-fi units, you name it, we were consuming more and more electronics than ever before. So that means that when these factories reopened, they were consuming all these chips for all these consumer electronics to get those stuff that we were still consuming as lockdown was starting to ease in the parts of the world, we were still consuming huge amounts of electronics. Now you may argue that Obviously, cars are a big, expensive item. Surely, car manufacturers can get these chips, uh, you know, at the same rate as buying a PlayStation or a phone. And no, weirdly, there is more money in these consumer electronics, and particularly something we're going to mention in a minute, which is what we're going to blame Elon for. And the reason I blame Elon? Well, Bitcoin. <laughs> So these chips, semiconductors, are obviously used in graphic cards and people who buy graphics cards, especially the high-end graphic cards, they're used in a thing called Bitcoin. Bitcoin mining has really, if anyone looked at buying graphics cards or doing a computer, they realise that graphic cards cost an absolute fortune because they can't make enough graphics cards for demand because people are buying graphics cards 
to make Bitcoin and Bitcoin price went through the roof recently when Tesla bought a load of Bitcoin and shot the market price through the roof again, which means more people wanted to mine Bitcoin. Now, electric cars have more of these semiconductors than a normal car, and that is because there is more electronics in an electric car as you would suspect over a combustion car. That's because there's charging relays, there's DC converters, there's loads of additional electronics on electric cars and electric cars tend to be a little bit higher spec than your normal combustion cars so they have satellite navigation systems in them as well which contain a ton of semiconductors and chips but obviously this demand for these chips and all these extra demands for the electric cars is still not explaining why we aren't getting electric cars or normal cars and why these car factories, we're going to explain in a minute, are actually shut. So surely car companies have a huge buying power of these silicon chips, don't they? <laughs> and no, no, car manufacturers cancelled all their orders as COVID kicked in and the demand for cars lowered. They cancelled their silicon chip orders and obviously the consumer rise of electronics went in so these semiconductors were snapped up by all the companies making playstations xboxes um all the new consoles that came out the new iphone they they snapped all these chips up so surely these car companies now can have some chips back they have a huge buying power <laughs> oh god how 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 wrong am i and how wrong are we because when i researched this you'd be surprised that the car industry buys 37 billion pound worth of chips. Okay, it sounds like a huge number, 37 billion. Volkswagen and Toyota are the two largest car firms making chips and buying silicon chips, semiconductors. They are the two largest companies. They buy four billion each. Roughly, roughly. However, Apple, Apple alone spends 56 billion pound a year buying semiconductors so <laughs> apple all by itself outbuys pretty much the entire car industry so if you're a silicon chip company and a company has just cancelled all its orders for its silicon chips because it was shutting its factories down and they only buy a tiny proportion of chips and you have one company that literally will buy every single chip that your factory can produce, who's gonna to be top at your order list? So what are we doing to deal with this worldwide shortage? Well, quite a lot. Ford have canceled several of its car plants shifts, and they said it's gonna cost them $2.5 billion. This is due just down the shortage of silicon chips. Nissan is idling its plants, General Notice said it's going to cost them two billion pound, uh, dollars in profits. Renault, the you know the big French car company that makes the Zoe that I absolutely love, Renault have also shut down their factory. They said they will make a hundred thousand cars less, just down to the semiconductor shortages. Some car companies have even cut the spec on their cars to save on semiconductors, so they are actually lowering the spec of cars so they can keep semiconductors. That means that they will not be installing radios on very low spec cars, and some car companies that used to provide sat-navs in certain specs will not be providing satellite navigation in their top spec cars because they'd rather keep those semiconductor chips to make the actual car. Now this just saves on chips. It doesn't actually fix the issue. So what is being done? Well, we'll get to that in a minute, but there's one last tiny caveat for the chip shortage and that was one of the chip factories one of the largest chip factories had a fire and is burnt down and needs repairing and rebuilding before it can restart making chips again so it just gets worse and worse for semiconductors but what is the world doing what are we doing to fix this issue well the same thing we do when we have any problem we're throwing money at it. So the world leaders are all spending money and well, car companies are seen as powerhouses. They create jobs, export cars, which helps the economy grow. They also support a huge ecosystem of supply. So 
you know, a car company will order seats and bits and bobs and they also provide stuff to salesmen for selling cars and then that trickles down to service work and then the logistics of delivering and all that. They are huge powerhouses. It is extremely important that the cars carry on being made from factories because they support economies massively. And also the shortage of chips doesn't just affect the cars, it's also going to affect consumer electronics later down the line. Samsung have actually delayed their new, their new Samsung phone just purely down to the semiconductor shortage. It was actually one of the reasons the new iPhone was delayed initially because of this shortage. And I just told you, they're the biggest buyer of these chips. So even they can't get all the chips they want at the same time. So let's have a look at what these world leaders are going to do to fix this issue. Are you a factory? Do you make silicon chips? Are you a company that could make silicon chips and open a new factory? Well, in my best Dr. Evil impression, would you like $1 billion? Because if you go to India and set up a factory, that is literally what the Indian government will give you to start factory production there in India. The sooner you do it, the sooner you've got a chance of getting that $1 billion for a new factory over there. But they're not the only people you know, trying to solve the issue over there. India want more chips, they want more factories over there, they want to try and stimulate their economy. But $1 billion is not a lot of money. And I say that because the US Biden administration have put in $2.3 trillion into infrastructure plans. However, all these plans, all this money pouring in, we're not gonna see any effect of it likely until 2022. Factories have to be built, production lines have to be ramped up, and we are likely not gonna see anything until next year. So what effect is this going to have on car prices? Well, quite a lot, because new cars are not available. You cannot get some new cars at the moment because of factory shutdowns, and the ones you can get are usually pre-sold to other leasing companies and other deals. But if you really, really want, you can get them. But there's just not the same supply that we're normally used to. Certain specs, certain models just aren't there. And we have the sat-nav issue with some cars being made with no sat-navs and being fitted with aftermarket sat-navs that they've just managed to source that were already built pre all these issues. So yes, the used car market has gone up. Now I wrote this script at the end of the third wave lockdown in the UK here. And I'm recording this video on the 1st of May. And that just gives you an idea, by the way, how forward plan some of these videos really are on my channel. But I record this on the 1st of May. And used car prices have actually gone up, not just electric vehicles, but also used ICE vehicles. They've gone up because the supply of new vehicles just isn't there and isn't hitting the demand at the moment. Now, we have to remember that ICE companies may be more tempted to make non-electric cars at the moment because electric cars use more silicon chips and therefore they could make more ice vehicles for the sake of an electric vehicle but they won't do this because there's something called a co2 target in the uk and europe where these manufacturers will pay huge fines for not hitting a co2 target now they're not going to make as many cars in general so therefore their target will be lower for co2 but you will see that they still will want to meet these co2 targets and sell quite a lot of electric cars so don't worry about that, electric cars will still be made just at the same percentage numbers that we've always seen. Thank you very much for watching this week's video. Please consider clicking subscribe, check out my other videos, and if you wanna support my channel, help me grow, buy new equipment, improve my studio, then look at Patreon. Thank you very much, and I'll see you again next week. Goodbye.